as you can see over my shoulder, it's field day. And field day in ham radio is a worldwide event where amateur radio operators are encouraged to get out of their shacks, get out of their houses, get away from their desks, and come operate in the field. There's two field days a year, one in the summer, one in the winter. I'm obviously at the summer field day. Now field day gives operators a chance to set up temporary antennas, work off of non-mains power, in other words, generators or solar or some other type of power, and they can work as many bands as they want. There are rules. There is a contest involved. Field day itself isn't a contest. It's more of an activity, but there is a contest involved. So my club, North Fulton Amateur Radio League, is here in Roswell at a city park with a huge setup, all different types of stations, working all different types of bands, trying to gather as many points as they can over the course of, well, about a day and a half. In this video, I'm gonna take you around, show you all the different stations that Narfil has set up, and we'll see if uh, we can catch some contacts, hopefully some long distance contacts, and uh, explain a little bit about the antenna systems and whatever else is here. Let's see what we can get into. Let's get going. Robert, who's running the, um, he's running the six meter digital station. Good morning. He's running the six meter digital station uh, and running FT8 on this computer. That one over there is receive only. And they have a couple of antennas. I'll show you those in a minute. They have a dipole and a... It's a moxie beam. Moxie beam. Yeah. And, and this is strictly six meters. Yeah. And you digital. can see, yeah, digital mode only. And you can see they're mirroring the waterfall that's coming off of the Yezu. And what Robert is doing is with the receive only unit, he's watching the signals coming in, figuring out where they are, and then using that to turn the Moxie beam to direct the 100 watts of energy we're using uh, to make contacts. And you said you had some um, DX yes, contacts. Yes, uh, Mexico, Yucatan. Peninsula. And that was just, just this morning? Yep, just this morning about 45 minutes ago. And you said the propagation is, is coming in and out, like a like an opening will open towards Wisconsin or towards Texas and you just got like a minute yeah. or two. So yeah, you get about a three minute window right now with the propagation. So you really have to focus our beam, all the energy of the radio waves into those stations. So I still have some locals. I have one here that, um, here's another Texas station that just came in. I don't know if you can see that line there. That's where that Texas station is that I'm uh, beaming into. And then I have the rotor turned right to that, that point so I can pick him up. So it looks like Texas is propagating pretty good. Um, we have some, we have some uh, contacts already. Uh, hopefully we'll have a few more coming up. So I'm getting a few other ones. We'll try. I mean, you could play this game blind, but knowing where the contacts are and having a directional antenna really ups your chances. Oh, it does, yeah. It increases your, your power. Directional antenna also increases your chances of picking up those contacts. Yep. All right, I'm going to show them where the antennas are. Okay, great. All right, they're right out back here. Yep. Let's yeah. take a look. All right, so they've got a dipole. It's about 12 feet. Not even. It's about 10 feet off the ground. I believe they're using that one for the receive only. And here's the Moxie directional six meter antenna. And that's the one that can be turned. You can see it turning right now. I don't want to be in the beam. 100 watts, got to back up a bit. How long do you have this station? What, what time did you start? How long are you going to work it? Uh, so on six meter propagation, good prop a good propagation will work from probably late afternoon you know, around five o'clock, we'll start picking up six, and then until dusk, and sometimes they'll go all the way to 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, you get that gray line around dusk. Yes, you get, yeah. Helps the six meter signal a lot. Yes, it does. So, but it can extend all the way into the, you know, not late, e late evening, but not early morning hours or anything like that. So, you got okay. one going now? Guys. All right, so we have one now in Cuba. I'm gonna try Cuba. Yeah, Cuba. Uh, he's calling Cuba. He's not into the field day, but um, it does count his points, we believe, yes. Sure. Um, oh, he's uh, responding to you. Yep, he's responding to me. 
As you see, uh, he sent me a signal back of negative 11, which isn't too bad. And he's not he, great. He's, he's coming in really good. Um, but he picked me up, and we'll, we'll take him. Yep. Uh, he's not a field day participant, but... Um, still counts. Still counts, yes. All right, so points on the board. So we got uh, two international contacts, Mexico and, and Cuba. Um, it's not even 11 o'clock. It's not 11 o'clock, hey. It's pretty good. Yep, yep. This is the go to station or get on the air. It's for people who aren't licensed. They can operate or people who have been inactive for a while. And they're running voice and they're running a full size loop antenna. So I'm not sure you'll be able to see it. Pretty thin wires. But they have it mounted to that lamppost, this lamppost, that one, and that one out there. And they have all the legs running off the lamppost out into a full length loop antenna. And you might be able to see now, it's running over this soccer pitch. Uh, but you can see where the feed point is of the antenna. Hopefully, you can see it. But yeah, excellent antenna over open ground, no interference. With a full-size loop, they can work pretty much any band they want to. November Foxtrot, Ford Golf Alpha, CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day, November Foxtrot, Ford Golf Alpha. Frequency 21.382 megahertz. November 5 here at Golf Alpha. This is November 3, November India Alpha. Over. Sorry, I'm November 3 station. Go ahead. Yeah, this is November 3, November India Alpha. November 3, November India Alpha. Free Alpha, Georgia. Copy that. We are 4 Alpha in Western Pennsylvania. 4 Alpha. So, 7-3. All right, we got Daryl here with the satellite set up. K4JJ. Kilo 4, Juliet, Juliet. K4JJ. Uh, one Alpha, is that in Alabama? Indiana. So he just made a contact and you can see that antenna tracking. It's, it's power cycling or something? Yeah. CQ, CQ, Field Day, Kilo 4, Julia, Julia, K4, JJ. You can see here that the sat uh, satellite's getting close to the edge. Sorry? Satellite's getting close to the horizon. Yep. Yeah, uh, right here, I tell you, 14 degrees. Yeah. That's about it. You got two contacts, one in Indiana, one in Alabama. Yep. Not bad. Not bad for satellite that's turning on and off. So this is the satellite that Daryl was communicating with, or probably similar to this, real size. A model that's exactly the same size as an actual one unit CubeSat. Now this would be powered by the solar panels. Yep. It would have, battery. It it would have battery. radio, battery as well. Yep. And it would have radios in here yep. um, acting as repeaters. And then it would have trailing or what type of antenna setup would this have? Yeah, usually it's some kind of a, of a uh, foil or band that can be held in place until it's deployed, and they'll contact it or have a timer on it. It'll, it'll be held down by something like as simple as fishing wire, and it'll have a resistor on it. And so they command it to melt that, to fire up that resistor that melts the fishing line, and then the thing pops out. So it's usually, you know, one on each uh, corner or any other number of configurations. And these are in low Earth orbit, most of them. Yeah. So over time, they'll degrade, the orbit will degrade, and they'll just burn up in the atmosphere. 
Absolutely. It, you know, that usually takes quite a while. They're moving 17,500 miles per hour, and at the height that they're at, that, that, that orbit will maintain for quite a long time without any propulsion. Okay. Daryl and I were just talking about his contact that you made in Alaska, yeah. where your antenna was about one degree scheduled, but it was about one degree off the ground, and you had a, less than a minute to make that contact. But you did from North right. Georgia to the South Alaska, Nome. Well, yeah, the north part of Alaska, near the land bridge. Wow. North of Nome, Alaska. Yeah, yeah. way, way up there. But you said you had something cool this morning on the satellite station? Yeah, so about 4 a.m. this morning, we had an ISS pass, International Space Station. So. I was trying to take a little nap, but I decided to get up and make sure to make that. And sure enough, the astronaut had been on the radio some recently. Uh, Gajel Lindgren is his name, Dr. Lindgren. And uh, he'd been on, you know, it's very, very rare for the astronauts to want to get on the radio other than with Ares contacts where they talk to students at school, which yep. is really cool. We're involved in that, too. Got a video on that. Yeah. Um, but he uh, was on, and he said he was probably going to do field aid. Sure enough, that was the first time he was on, and I was actually able to chat with him for just a second so, and tell him that, how much we appreciate him being there. So that was really cool. Talked to an astronaut on the space station this morning. A field day contact to the space station. That's right. That's super cool. So 4 a.m. my time, but it's 8 a.m. his time, like 8.15 in the morning. So he got up. Just got on the radio do that, right? Get on the radio. Well, it's <laughs> worth it. Had you made contact with anyone on the ISS before, other than scheduled school things? I have. I yeah, and of course did this with the club call. I did talk to him a couple weeks ago with my personal call. Nice. And then of course the school contacts. Yeah. That's really cool. Yep. All right. Thanks, well, good luck. Thanks. Right next to field day, we got some folks playing cricket. Cool stuff. So the CW station's running a bunch of antennas, including this tri-bander on a trailer. And that's running the 10 meter, 15 meter, and 20 meter bands for the, the CW group. And it's directional, so they can point it wherever they want uh, to make sure that they're when they're chasing contacts that they're able to get it. All, everything is powered by this one generator. Field day needs more than uh, electricity to operate. Need some food as well. Yes. The CW crew also has a couple of dipole antennas. They have an 80 meter, which you may be able to see up there, and that runs all the way over to the light post. Then connected to that, they have a 40 meter and another 40 meter. Let's take a look at the CW station. Uh, where they're using continuous wave or Morse code as you call it. It's the quietest station at field day. We're back in the CW tent, the quietest tent at field day. And I just wanted to show you this microphone. Probably wondering why is there a microphone in the CW tent? Well, it's actually a CW key. For you hardcore CW guys, turn your microphones into a key. Here we have the 40 meter phone station. In other words, voice. This is the main voice area, and they have their own full loop antenna over that soccer field, just like the other one I showed with the anchors being on the light post and a full loop antenna. Oscar November again? Kilo 7, Hotel Oscar November. Please copy. We Alpha Georgia. The rest of the house, I think we should be okay. Copy 2 Alpha Arizona. Thank you. QRZ Field Day. Kilo 4, Juliet, Juliet. There's a voice contact from North yeah, Georgia to Bravo. Arizona. Papa for Bravo Echo, please copy. It'll be Alpha, Georgia. Right. I can't hear that. That was what, Delta Papa Romeo? Yeah. Thanks for the contact. QRZ Field Day, Kilo 4 Juliet, Juliet. 
Seeky Field Day, Seeky Field Day, Kilo 4, Juliet, Juliet, Field Day. Where was that last contact? Seeky Field Day, Seeky Field Day, Kilo 4, Juliet, Juliet, Field Day. Where was that last contact? Puerto Rico. Nice, DX. What a great field day. Uh, got out here, got to mingle with uh, some of my club members, meet some new people, uh, hear some great contacts, learn a little bit about not only satellites, but antennas and other things. Uh, so just exactly what field day is all about. It's about getting outside, uh, being with friends, meeting new people, learning things, and getting reacquainted with operating outdoors. If you'd like to learn more about my club, North Fulton Amateur Radio League, they put all this up, they set everything up, they did all the scheduling. Uh, there'll be a link to our website in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the videos. Thanks for sticking to the end, and we'll talk to you soon. This has been K4BBL73. I'm clear.